It'll be one to go this time by. Coming to the green, buddy. Coming to the green. Let's go get him. Go, go, go. Dig, dig, dig. Go, 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 go. Get your motor running. Head out on the highway. We're now joined in the infield media center by today's winner, the Camping World RV 400, driver the number 16, 3M Ford, Greg Biffle. Greg, tell us about your run. Well, it was uh, it was an exciting day to say the least. Uh, I think a lot of people got to see great racing. Uh, the fans, everybody's uh, Dover always puts on a great race. Uh, this place is so tough. Um, I have to say that uh, I uh, I thought I was going to you know let these guys down. I got the car too loose on Saturday yesterday for the race today. Um, I guess I misjudged the weather and how sunny it was going to be and how slick the track was. So. Uh, I had to pit only eight laps in the race and give up all my track position to tighten my car up. And, uh, you know, didn't know it was going to continue to be looser as the day went on and, and the sun went down some. So uh, that was what we really fought. And, uh, you know, once I was able to get the track position and get near the front, um, you yeah, know, it really worked out. And, and obviously, you know, hell of a race with uh, my teammates and the 48 and everybody. We're also joined by today's winning crew chief, Greg Irwin. Greg, tell us a little bit about uh, today's strategy. Uh, the, the strategy was um, to take what we thought was probably the best uh, race car on Saturday with a guy that's had a lot of success here and, uh, and not screw it up. Uh, we figured this thing was going to be four tire runs most of the day. Uh, we felt like we had enough segments there in the center of the race that were long runs. Uh, where we could watch the car kind of come through traffic, and uh, we, we we were able to make most of that track position up by the second pit stop uh, that we gave up. But but we did keep tightening it up all day, and it's sort of a fine line that you walk there between uh, over adjusting and uh, getting it to where he can really run hammer down and and do what he did there the last 50 laps. It was uh, spectacular. I hope the fans enjoyed it. Doesn't get any better than that. And uh, joined by team owner Jack Roush, uh, Jack. Uh, Tell us about your thoughts on, on seeing all three cars up front there. Well, I'm uh, just proud to be here as I was uh, last week with uh, with Greg and Greg. I uh, you know I'm obliged to be on the on the winning uh, uh, pit box whenever the uh, checkered flag comes out, and I was really in a quandary today of what I should do. I, I've been pretty lucky of, of uh, making my move when it uh, when it counted uh, in the past. I've never been on the wrong pit box when one of our cars won. But uh, today I really had a problem. But I, I was confident that uh, with Greg having four tires and with the fact they tightened him up and the problem that uh, we were hearing on the radio, everybody was having a problem being loose. Greg just about lost his mind there for a while. And, uh, but right after that we realized he still was, had some of the fastest laps. And uh, if we tightened it up or if Greg, if Greg had the presence, if Greg Irwin had the presence to tighten it up just enough uh, that he'd be a factor at the end. Of course, then uh, Bob Osborne and, and Carl only took two tires, which was their undoing, I think. Matt was really good. Uh, the best car that we had may have been Jamie McMurray. And, of course, he got tangled up in a wreck early on. But, uh, but they made a great save by coming in with, with 10 laps into the race, giving up their track position, and then uh, Greg kept it out of trouble and, uh, and stayed, uh, stayed, ran clean until he was able to get the track position to go in and figure out what he needed to win the race. We'll now open it up to questions from the media. As a courtesy, please state your name and affiliation. We'll start with Don, come to Fence, and then go to Tom. Greg, uh, it's Don Cobble with Morris News Service. You couldn't win a race in the first 26, and now that we're in the chase, you can't lose. Uh, what's going on? I wasn't trying before. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know. It is uh, it is quite coincidental. Um, I have uh, put more emphasis, I think, on, you know, on this. I've used uh, – we, we – the reality of it is is we haven't been good enough in the past. Uh, our car hasn't been good enough to win. And I hadn't got it good enough on Saturday to win races. And I felt like I'm going to be more involved in these last, uh, you know, ten races and eight or, you know, leading up to the chase to 
be more involved about the adjustments on the car and, and looking at and being understanding what everybody's doing and and uh, trying to understand a little bit better. And it's starting to pay dividends uh, for me. But uh, you know, we're so close to winning uh, several times leading up to this. Um, you know, the most recent California. Uh, we had a great run at California. If you take Jimmy Johnson out of the picture, um, you know, we're kind of in a league of our own. And then he was in a league of his own. So um, I, I feel like uh, this has been coming for a while. And uh, just just a lot of focus and um, concentrating on what we're doing right now because it's it uh, doesn't get more important than this. Vince Bonfigli, WNJC Radio. Greg, back in June, you were chasing Kyle Busch down. You said you can get to him, couldn't do nothing with him, the way the cars were running. What's different from June to today when you were passing everybody with no problem? The springs I decided to, you know, run in the car today. Um, uh, you know, just I knew, I thought about it, we talked about it, and uh, I just said in order to be able to come back and run better, we're going to have to find a different setup that will run better in traffic and, and uh you know, run around cars differently. And uh, like I said, I got the car a little bit too loose. I figured I had it just right on Saturday, but obviously uh, just barely pulled it out today. But I just came back with something different than, than I ran in the spring. And uh, it was kind of a test you know, when we unloaded it off the truck, and, and it ran well. Um, our engineering department, everybody's helped us, you know, get pointed in that right direction and modeling and and uh, seven posts and all those things. So it wasn't like just a out of the blue gas. It was something that uh, you know we've been working on. Tom Jensen, SpeedTV.com. Jack, every team runs better or worse at certain tracks. You know, it makes sense that you guys would run and run real well at Michigan, which is your own backyard, your home race. But you guys really dominate here, and even the races you haven't won, you've always had a lot of guys in the top five. What specifically about Dover works for your cars and your drivers? Well, the um, the, the the racetrack is real fast. Um, you uh, you wind up carrying a lot of speed into the corner. You get back to the gas as quickly as you can. You hold your breath and try not to hit the wall. I'm speaking for the drivers and what I've what I've seen. Uh, Mark Martin was really good. Uh, Greg Biffle right behind him. Uh, you know had much the same uh, much the same uh, 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 interests in a racetrack. Um, uh, Matt Kenseth, uh, Carl now, and Jamie. They uh, they all like to be up all up in the gas and uh, they're extraordinarily brave and. Uh, and uh, if 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 we behind the scenes get the car where it'll uh, do what it might, uh, they they're the guys to close the deal. And I've been blessed with people like that my entire life, time of being in uh, in in Winston Cup and now Nextel Cup and now Sprint Cup racing. 